We're going down! The pilots shout over the radio. And with a lurch, the plane suddenly stops falling out of the sky as the pilots look out of the window, surprised to find Power Girl holding them up. It's okay. I've got you, she says with a smile. But one of the bird people's spores sense a powerful being. It leaps from the infected person's mouth and into Power Girl. But you're probably wondering how we got here and what a bird person is. Our heroes have practically lost Earth. A new enemy appeared, the Necrostar, and the only creature ever capable of defeating it was Starro, but he could not be found. So Beast Boy transformed into Starro and won the day for the heroes. But Amanda Waller, in an attempt to prove the heroes were worthless to protect Earth, used Dr. Hate to wipe Beast Boy's mind, making him into just Starro. Now the heroes are battling against this Garo as he transforms people into beasts just like him. This is Comic Story, and I take comic books, turn them into audio drama so that you know what's going on in the world of comics and what you can add to your collection. Today, we're going to be reading Beast World, issue number three, the current DC crossover event. If you enjoy this type of content, consider supporting us over at Patreon or YouTube memberships for early access. Now, we go to Conduct. Lion Black Adam roars, trying to slash at Donna Troy while Starfire continues to burn the Garo spores around them. Get out of there! Oracle shouts over the radio, but Donna shakes her head. If we retreat, Black Adam will kill everyone in the city, she shouts. But Starfire has an idea, and she grabs a hold of Donna, pulling her in close. She sends out a blast of fire energy, burning all of the spores around them. Below them, Flash and Impulse have now arrived. Impulse holding up a hand as the spores fall around them. Hey, it's raining burning horrors, he says with a smile. Starfire and Donna then land next to the Flash, explaining that they've come to evacuate the uninfected from Kondok. As the speedsters begin their work, Raven's voice appears in their minds. Donna, I need you in space, Raven tells her. So Starfire nods to her friend and turns back to Lion Black Adam. Go, I'll deal with Adam, she says. Meanwhile, back at Titan's Tower, Nightwing has brought the wolf Batman to the tower and caged him up. He's tired, and he's wounded. He's bleeding from several cuts from Batman's claws. Oracle looks at him and orders him to allow Dr. Clancy to check his wounds. The longtime friend of Dick Grayson asks him to remove his mask. She wants to check if he has a concussion, but of course Dick Grayson refuses. Dick, it's okay. Clancy says, revealing that she has actually known that Dick Grayson was Nightwing for some time. Dick is shocked, but they're interrupted by the arrival of Detective Chimp. Clancy screams in fear at the talking animal throwing her flashlight at him. Bobo steps aside and raises an eyebrow. You think I'm one of the beast people? I get that not everyone has my powers of deduction, but I'm talking and I'm wearing a little hat. He says, taking off his detective's hat. Nightwing smiles and introduces Bobo to Clancy. He's the world's greatest detective and apparently also pretty good at infiltrating impregnable force fields. As Nightwing tells her, amazed that Bobo slipped through the Titan's tower's defenses. Bobo nods and turns to Nightwing. He explains that he has realized that while this attack looks like pure chaos, it is in fact not. The creatures have an agenda, Bobo tells him. Meanwhile, back over in Metropolis, a commercial plane is asking for permission to land, but the pilots are shocked as bird people begin to rip the plane apart, taking out the engines and beginning to tear into the main cabin. We're going down! The pilots shout over the radio, and with a lurch, the plane suddenly stops falling out of the sky as the pilots look out of the window, surprised to find Power Girl holding them up. It's okay, I've got you. She says with a smile, but one of the bird people's spores sense a powerful being. It leaps from the infected person's mouth and into Power Girl. She manages to put the plane on the ground, but staggers away. Oracle, code red, I'm infected, please hurry, she says over the radio as she begins to transform. Suddenly, she bellows in anger and pain as she transforms into a literal flaming bird. The Power Girl Phoenix leaps into the air, turning her rage-filled gaze on the plane that she just saved. A blast of heat vision lashes out, but it's stopped by a chest sporting the S-Shield of Superman. John Kent smiles as he turns back to the civilians in the planes. Everyone all right? He asks. He looks at the flight attendants and asks them to calmly get everyone to safety, promising that he's going to deal with Power Girl. 
Electricity suddenly crackles around him as he transforms with his new powers to Blue Superman. He leaps into the air, grabbing Power Girl, flying her away with a crack of the sound barrier. Meanwhile, back in Kondok. Starfire has managed to fight Lion and Black Adam off. She slams him into the ground and the beast flies away in fear. Oracle, Black Adam, he just ran away. She says into the radio in surprise. Back at the tower, Bobo nods his head, explaining that the beast people have basic instincts, fight or flight. And faced with a super strong burning woman? Yeah, he's chosen flight. Barbara says in agreement. But Bobo points out that the infected are attacking infrastructure as well. And that goal isn't coming from instinct. The drive is coming from something else, Bobo explains. Meanwhile, Donna has arrived in space. She has the rest of the heroes here trying to slow down Garo's approach to Earth. The mighty being is just trying to get to Earth, to approach it and swallow it or something. Raven goes up to Donna, asking if she can use her lasso of persuasion to slow Garo down. If it's stronger than I am, the power will be reversed. I will be lost. Donna explains to Raven, but the magic user nods her head. If you are lost, I will find you. Could you please try? Raven asks her softly. Donna nods her head, taking up her lasso. She orders the other heroes to return to Earth. She flies to the massive creature that was once her friend, the creature that her friend has become, Garo, and loops her lasso around one of its tentacles. Hear me! No further! She shouts to the conqueror. Sweat breaks out on her face as strain begins to hit her. But Garo, he stops for now. Donna looks back to Raven. I can hold him. Not for long, but for now. Go, help below. Stop the beast. Donna gasps as she holds her friend Garo in space. Meanwhile, over at Stryker's Island, Amanda Waller has arrived with her protection of Peacemaker and her paramilitary forces. It's here that they are fighting off infected shark people that have boarded onto Stryker's Island and have begun to approach her. Waller begins to head inside to find one prisoner that she's looking for, telling Peacemaker to simply deal with the shark people. They're just sharks. She stands outside of the prisoner's cell, glaring at the bald villain. Lex Luthor, you're coming with me, she says. He smiles, looking up from his book. I'm sorry, Amanda. I'm afraid I will have a hard time because of my many, many crimes. You see, I'm paying penance for the things that I've done. Get up, or I'm putting a bullet in the brain you think so highly of, she tells him. He finally stands, and he asks her, What do you want, Waller? I doubt you'd risk my head. Clearly you want help with your giant starfish problem. He tells her, and Waller shakes her head, explaining that this isn't Lex's mind that she needs, but it's something that he stole from Batman. It's time to slay Beast Boy, she says as they turn to leave. The story of Beast World is going to be continuing, but it looks like it's also happening very prominently in the Titans book. So next week, we're going to be bringing you everything to get you caught up on the Titans book. So you also have that happening. So make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and thank you for your time.